Colleagues, I bring you greetings from uh, Cairo, where I am based. Um, I've been working with the United Nations World Program for the last 20 years. And my job has always involved availing information for decision uh, support for humanitarian purposes. WAP responds to all kinds of humanitarian crises, including due to droughts, floods, conflicts, health epidemics such as cholera and Ebola. Now, such disasters not only cause humanitarian suffering, but also destroy opportunities for sustainable development. To prevent humanitarian crisis and ensure timely response, we need data and analytical tools that create early warning systems, vulnerability analysis, needs assessments, targeting and impact analysis. And as a result of my responsibility, I have been involved in various innovation on data generation, collection, and development of analytical tools and applications. It is in this context that I came to know and collaborate with the use of geospatial tools. Let me take this opportunity to acknowledge and appreciate uh, Jack for his efforts to provide affordable access to geospatial tools and applications for humanitarian purposes. This has enhanced our ability to respond to emergencies. It is also critically important that geo geospatial tools are used for addressing the SDGs in which all national governments have committed to achieve. Here are the, uh, the sustainable development goals that every person in the world has agreed to achieve. And we need to change gears in order to achieve this SDGs using all the available uh, structures. Now, however, national governments, particularly in developing countries, are not readily adopting the use of geospatial data and tools in their national planning decision-making processes. The key challenge for governments in institutions of not adopting such, such data to be, uh, can be summarized as follows. One, they are conscious and, and they have concerns about data security and lack of trust in the proposed systems. They perceive the geospatial data tools are too expensive for governments to use. They may lack of technical staff as there is limited investment in training as well. And there is ad hoc usage of data and uncoordinated approach to governments by the various technology providers. And such systems are not integrated into national, regional, and continental systems. As a result, these systems are not prioritized nor included in national budgets and hence remain outside national systems. The good news is that all the challenges indicated above can be addressed and become opportunities. I will share with you our experience in Egypt. Here is what we did. First, we established a public-private partnership that can facilitate the work. Then map out all the relevant institutions and government systems. Three, for each institution docu document their core data requirements, the challenges, the concerns, and propose a solution. Four, select a pilot institution where this model could be implemented. Five, build a strategy to upscale the good practices to other institutions in the country. Now let me take you through several slides showing practical examples of what we did in, in Egypt. 
First, we established a public-private partnership with uh, ESRI NEA. Uh, thank you, colleagues from ESRI, NEPAD, and the WFP. So we have three institutions coming together and form a public-private partnership. Then, through this public-private partnership, we mapped all the several institutions that are relevant in the country. Here, I have listed Luxor Government, National uh, Food Safety Authority, Ministry of Environment, Central Agency for Public Mobilization and Statistics, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Supply and the Internal Trade, Ministry of Social Solidarity, Information Decision Support Center, and Ministry of Education. Among these institutions, we selected one. And, and that was uh, CAPMAS. This is the government part that has the largest data set in, in the country. Working with this institution, as I said, the, the public-private partnership, we created a geospatial platform uh, for, for, for CAPMAS. Now, for CAPMAS, the most in, important issue was how to conduct the census and how to avail this data for the public good. And that was done and we managed uh, together. And in fact, the next slide shows you some of the recognitions that the CAPMAS uh, received both at national, regional, and international levels. I say this because this is now what would be uh, replicated in the other ministries. So I have several, uh, a couple of slides more that show this technology that we had created in CAPMAS was used in other uh, ministries. So this is the Ministry of Social Solidarity, and this system, they focus on social protection, and social protection looking at efficiency of um, support to the, to the citizen and then so forth. So this is, again, uh, an actual system that we, are, we have developed uh, in Egypt. Another uh, example, this is Ministry of Supply and Info Internal Trade. The, the system here looks at local production and looks at the, the, pro, uh, the food pro, uh, marketing inside the country. And this is where a lot of logistics set up and logistics processes take place. And again, this is a ministry that we have managed to put uh, this in, in, in place. Another example, Ministry of Education and uh, Ministry of Education, where we created a geospatial platform. And this is to manage education and improvement and uh, looking at uh, student uh, teaching and learning processes. Egypt has more than 15 million students. And imagine ma managing those. Uh, it, it's a very important part of the government business. Another example is supporting a national food safety agency. Again, this is a new institution that uh, the Egypt, Egyptian government has created, and we are working with this. And you can, if you are talking about food safety, you need the whole network of the systems from the farm up to the consumer, and how you, you put a system for that. This is an example that we have, we have achieved together. This is part of localization of the SDGs. So this looks at a local level where all the services are coming together. And we have an example of this where we are working in Luxor, uh, one of the beautiful cities in, in Egypt. And what we did is we added to that uh, the te technology that is required. Now, with all this, uh, we have learned a lot and we would like to share this outside of Egypt and with the rest of the African continent. So this, this is the link where uh, we want to go forward. And, and replicating this, what we are putting in place is the Egyptian government, uh, Nepal, the African Union, the World Food Program, and the ESRI working together, we are moving into addressing uh, this in other countries. Um, here, you have an African Union at continental level. You have regional institutions, North Africa, West Africa, Southern Africa, East Africa. 
And at national level, you have Egypt and other countries that will be determined. And as institutions, our example was CAFMAS, then we will identify other institutions in other countries. And this is what I would like to share with you and the good news that we will uh, continue uh, working in other countries. Um, just one uh, announcement that Egypt and WFP are signing an agreement on establishing a South-South cooperation platform and coordination mechanism for Africa in Egypt. So everyone who wants to support and join us, uh, you are welcome. Thank you.